Right, welcome back. In the last video you saw the exhaust being finished and uh, now we are ready for first start. But as per usual there's a little whole snag list of things I need to go through before I attempt the first start. Uh, car's back down on the ground. Um, I got that CV joint done on the passenger's, no driver's side that was stripping me up. It was an issue with the actual pot joint if it'll focus or maybe it won't but the splines in there there's something wrong with them and I couldn't get it to go on the um, output shaft at all uh, so fortunately I had another CV joint lying about um, that I swapped over in its entirety because you can't match inners and outers because they wear together so you can't put a newer inner on an older outer because you get um, well obviously you get tolerances that aren't um, ground together you know worn together so fortunately I got that sus but didn't feel many of that there was a lot of swearing and a lot of hammering going on before it was sorted but anyhow snag list here we have one of my traditional snag lists, so I don't forget anything. Number one on the list is that rubber boot that I mentioned in the previous video that I forgot to tighten up. Just needs a tie wrap on it, just to stop it from being too close to the exhaust. Uh, tappets are done last night, so I can put a new rocket cover gasket on and chuck some oil in it. I hope it doesn't leak anywhere. The same with water. Uh, and I can also turn on the ECU and check for fuel pressure and any leaks pulley BRH is bottom radiator hose um, it's really really tight to the bottom rad hose and the pulley there was like only millimeters of clearance before so I need to just uh, check that is safe before I start turning the engine over lots crank position sensor I need to check its position with the ECU and get a reading on where that's at because the missing tooth will be in a different place the last time. I need to reset the throttle stops um, and then I can go for a first start but obviously I need to check for oil, get oil pressure first and put the plugs in before I do all that lot but that's by the by. Clutch master needs reconnecting to the pedal, uh, the system needs bleeding and the clutch needs setting. Uh, it needs a good hoover out, uh, refit the carpets and the seat uh, I did the blanking panel uh, for the old gear change where the magic one used to come through the floor last night. I just used a piece of Perspex because it's not load bearing because it just had uh, rubber in it before. So a bit of Perspex cut to a square and then heated with a paint stripping gun until it was nice and pliable and then just moulded to the shape of the floor and then screwed down. Uh, paint and under seal in a few places I've noticed underneath where stone chips and that have taken the paint and the under seal off down to the metal and I need to treat them and it needs a cooling system flush because there was a lot of brown crap in there when we took it apart and I'll just stick some speed flush in it after it's up and running and then just dump the water out and re refill it so that little lot should keep me going for the rest of today I would have thought obviously I can't do the clutch um, stuff by myself so I'll have to wait till uh, Chris gets home this evening
there we go, there's a lesson to be learned. Don't put your air filter back plate on until you've checked for fuel leaks. Because in there, you can see that that was leaking because it wasn't quite tight enough. And the only way to get at it was to take the filter back plate off. So you're better off leaving that off until everything's ready to go and you check there's no leaks. Lesson learned. doesn't sound good Okay, so in that last clip you saw that it didn't want to start and there's only two plugs that are wet which is two and four and I had a massive backfire so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun the DTA program where you spin it over and you get a sine wave and it tells you what um, the timing is possibly set at uh, which is your base timing and it gives you two figures um, last time I put in I can't remember, it was 314 originally and one of the options he gave me this time was 217 or something like that. So I'll try the other one and see if it makes any difference because at the moment it just doesn't want to start at all. It's, it's not happy at all so we'll see how we go. Well that's not going to happen, it looks as though the laptop's died. Round two. <laughs> right.
Right, it's giving me two figures there, 258 and 78 degrees. Uh, I stuck in 78, so I'll see what happens next after I put the plugs back in. Right, let's see what happens this time. So that was a bit better, it was at least coughing and it was turning over a lot quicker that time. So I'll maybe try uh, swinging the timing just to see what that does. Well, I can see some pretty impressive flames in the camera display as I'm looking out. Uh, but it's not one to start just as yet. I just need to work out what's going on. It certainly seems to be time related anyway. I'll, uh, I'll check the plugs to make sure they're not drowned. But, uh, hmm. It definitely works better when you put the timing at 78 degrees as well. When you put it at like 258, which was the other option, it doesn't want to turn over at all. But 78 is near, but not quite right, so more tweaking. <laughs> 